PMEA SGN <laughs> of the PMEA SGN uh, League of Legends Championship Series. I'm uh, I'm joined over here by uh, my friend. Uh, what what should I call him? I want to play ADC, but ADC in 2017. Lol, uh, buddy. I prefer AD Carry Extraordinaire. AD Carry Extraordinaire. Okay, well, I mean, you need to make all stars before you get that title. But, you know, <laughs> we got you. We got you. I got time. robbed. <laughs> <laughs> we got you next time. But um, but yeah, I'm I'm joined here with Bud Nificent, uh, AD Carry for uh, who? Champion Spotlight Austin. That's Champion right. Champion Spotlight Austin. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Also in the semifinals. Yeah. Sure. Um, but anyway, so we're coming at you with uh, Team Vi versus CBK. Uh, this is going to be a pretty interesting matchup. Team Vi has so Just much momentum man. right now. Yeah, <laughs> and we're, we're going to get to the picks and bans right here. Uh, what's it? So first band is going to be Ivern. That's going to be directed at Silent Taco. Pretty proficient at the champ. Uh, I don't think he's strong right now, but I guess it's just hitting his comfort zone. Making I'd have to a little bit. disagree with you on that one. I, I think he's, he's got the highest win rate out of any jungler under Diamond right now. I think... No, I thought Galio was got tier right now. Oh, I thought we were talking about junglers. It, yeah, Galio jungle. Is it? Yeah. I don't know. I just checked yesterday, and Ivern's still really strong. Oh, uh, okay. Well, <clears throat> I guess when you're proficient at the champ, and it has a pretty good win rate. I don't know. I just I don't just see a lot of Ivern's in my games. Table. Yeah, I guess, I guess I just don't see a lot of Ivern's in my... Um, in my elo right now. I would think the Tristana band's a little more interesting. I'm not sure if that's just a main of the opponent or... Yeah, I think Xerox 33, I played with him a couple of games and um, he's pretty proficient at the Tristana. They, I think it's just one of those cases where they go on OP.GG and they're like, oh, well, you know, who does he play the most? Tristana. Alright, ban him. Um, yeah. We also have a Vi band coming out of uh, CBK. Uh, that's Sir Everett's. Uh, Sir Everett's isn't a terrible vibe player, but you know, I don't. I don't think he really just plays the vibe. He can play a lot of things. He's played a lot of things this split. He's played the Olaf. He's played the Graves, which hasn't been banned yet. Um, and uh, he's played a couple of other the Lee Sin. He's played a couple of really good Lee Sin games as well. So, Kazix just throwing power bands out there for that one, I think. Yeah, it looks like they're really trying to really trying to offset Silent Taco, but he has a Zack. Silent Taco has a Zack that he can fall back on. Unless they're going to first pick the Zack. That's right, he's like a Zack main, right? Yeah, and they left the Thresh up for Violet, uh, Violet Sosui Cat as well. Yeah, interesting. I, I'm not sure what the Tristana band's all about. I mean, I mean, I guess like... Okay, so like Tristana is like a hyper carry, fair enough. But uh, Violet really Sesame Cat as well. List of hyper carries, in my opinion, um, it takes so long to get going, and just does you know like Jinx or a Cogma would do do whatever Tristana's trying to do a lot better. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe he's the one trick that we don't know about or something. I mean, I can. That's all I, I can mean, really think about. I've been trying to make Tristana work right now, trust me. You know I love my Tristana. Yeah. But it's just not as strong. Hmm. I guess we'll have to see where that goes. We'll have to you know, we'll have to see where the <laughs> where the mentality lies right now with Team Vi and these bands. Because like I said, well hmm. So something pretty interesting to, to note is that they left the Thresh up, but they might just first pick the Thresh. Um, they also left the Graves up. I don't know if Silent Taco is proficient at Graves, but, I mean, if they can take away the Graves, that'd be really, really, uh, that'd be really, really in their favor, because Sir Everett plays a really mean Graves. Yeah, it's worth noting that he did get a little nerf on, but it's just an MR shield, or the MR resistances that they nerfed on him, so he's still really strong as a jungler, I think. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see, so an Ivern ban, a Tristana ban, and a Cosmix ban. Hmm. I'm pretty sure he's going to lean back onto the Zac, which may be Team Vi's plan at the moment. Um, they're having like calm they're having issues. Calm issues. Yeah, it's all good. Ah, there it is. So the Hecarim ban. 
Man, a lot of a lot of jungle bands this game. So we got the Ivern band, we got the Kha'Zix band, we got the Hecarim band, and uh, the Vi band. So that yeah, first pick Twitch is okay. pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you. Pretty pretty strong. Twitch is is. I think he's number two in right now in win rate for eighty carries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's just he's a lot of the pros, of course, and these are just these are pro players. So take it with a grain of salt. You're saying he just out hyper carries anyone right now, mm. late game. Yeah, and sadistic is actually really proficient on the twitch as well. Like that's that's his champion. That's his most comfort uh, eighty carry at the moment, and he can do some yeah, pretty baller stuff with it. it. Yeah, he can do some pretty baller stuff with it too. So. It'll be interesting to see what uh, what CBK brings to the table here to, to counter that Twitch. I mean, they could pick the Kog'Maw. They could pick yeah. the Kog'Maw to, to out There's aggressive the in the game. And then a Zack Rumble pit. We didn't talk about any bans against Frontlash. Wow. They left. That Rumble can come in pretty clutch for them if there's, with the team fight if they keep building around it. Zack Rumble. Yeah, already that's a pretty, that's a pretty decent uh, engage comp right there second pick jace now how's that feel i mean it is what it is but uh that can go to either front lash or general dill both of them are very proficient at that champion so uh you know that's at the end of the day that's the beauty of uh of the jace pick there for uh team vi is that they can flex it out it's not like you know with me like i pick the J uh, or someone picks the jace and it's like oh that's going to sebastian like 100 percent and then the Sejuani pickup by Sir Everett, so they want to, huh? That's that's a really aggressive comp right now that they have the Twitch, the Jace, and the Sejuani. Yeah, they're gonna need some PO for that Twitch. I guess the Sedge can do that, um, but I think you really want to use Sejuani as an engage more than a peel champion. So yeah, it'll be, be interesting, interesting to see. Will Brooks brings. It's gonna have to be a. Uh, I would think a Lulu would be really good here. I don't or, think he has uh, Lulu. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Janna maybe, something got to peel for him. Yeah, a Janna. Even uh, Malzahar wouldn't be bad. I don't know about that. I mean, the really only form of CC that you have uh, at that point would be your ultimate. And yeah, but you can zone with your your silences and your and like your other and your Zach? minions, dudes. Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so maybe not. I don't. I yeah, don't it'd have to be a Lulu or a or a Janna. A thrash. Or a thrash, or like you said, Braum. Yeah, Braum would be good too. Or Nami, if he up. plays Nami. Nami would be great, yeah. Uh, Jin Thresh, so classic bot lane coming out of uh, Violet Socio Cat here. Mm -hmm. CC heavy. Um, Jin will always be in a good spot just because his kit. He yeah. doesn't bring as much damage to the table anymore like he used to, but um, I mean, like I said, he. He basically helps support your your mid and top getting kills and stuff in the late game. Mm. And we have the Morgana, <laughs> so that, there's a kill for the Twitch. That's actually a really really safe bet. That's a safe champion uh, yeah. to use because you know you can just pop Black Shield and make sure that Twitch gets out alive. And the Aurelia pickup from Frontlash, he has he can do some great things with that Aurelia. And especially against the Rumble, he's he did it against. Um, I forgot who the top laner was. Uh, for um, gosh, who did they play in the in the first round? Uh, they played team for um, Vi. No, I no. don't know. <laughs> they played first team best team. First team best team, yeah. Okay. So and the top laner uh, for first team best team was. I should know this. <laughs> I should know this on the f um, co. It's okay. I don't remember. Uh, the other. I'm going to, to check it out. But in any case, uh, he played against the Rumble with the Aurelia when me and Greg at the time were like, man, you know, that doesn't seem like a really easy lane uh, for the Aurelia. Huh, they got the Malzahar for their mid laner. <clears throat> and, you know, he, he ended up being absolutely dominant that game so we'll see where that yeah i don't know um the team comp seems kind of it's not really geared around the twitch it's more geared around like trying to force the zack or the rumble to pick which carry they want to 
want to kill for you know there's no like maybe I think Dylan or General Dylan and Frontlash are like okay if we pick the Aurelia and Jace like they won't go after the Twitch because we're dealing so much damage <laughs> but that's not yeah, a bad the, plan that's not a bad plan yeah definitely carry focused um we'll see if the engage comp from shoot I can't remember the who's red team <laughs> uh CBK <laughs> CBK if the engage comp from them uh can have you know out team fight this this carry team. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be really dependent on Silent Taco and his calls uh, for using that Zack slingshot because he can cause a lot of disruption within the fight. But the thing is, is that if Team Vi is able to disengage uh, in an appropriate manner, then they they have they have the damage to just be able to turn around, and they have the Sejuani to counter engage as well if they really need to, and like. That's why I give it to Sir Everett for picking the Sejuani because I've, I've said time and time again that the Sejuani is such a strong pickup in a 5v5 manner. Um, you know, in solo queue, not as not as strong, not as, you know, you can't really carry with the Sejuani. But in a 5v5, uh, in a 5v5 setting, absolutely busted. I'll be completely honest because you can choose when to engage and you know that you're going to have follow-up. Especially with the Aurelia, especially with the Jace, and Sadistic as well on the Twitch. If you can get the positioning right and rat-a-tat-tat -tat while they're all frozen, it's just going to be absolutely disgusting. Yeah, and if you can get, if you can get, you know, just one or two of Jace's, um, what do you call it? Balls of death? I don't know what they're called. <laughs> Shockwaves? Shockwaves. That just sets you up so perfectly for an engage from the Sejuani. Fun fact... Riot changed Twitch's ult back to Spray and Pray. When did this happen? I don't know. I noticed it when I was playing Twitch the other day. <laughs> huh. Alright, so that's... I'll make a little note of that there. But, um... Hmm. Which makes it less fun to cast, but, you know. Yeah, I like Riot Tat Tat better, I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, so hopefully Sir Everett's, uh, you know, picks up the Smite instead of the uh, Ignite. Uh, don't think Ignite Sejuani is as good as Smite Sejuani, but hey, you never know. They might be on some Korean level stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Thirty seconds. Hopefully, we can go ahead. Being, uh, having you have having seen my no Smite drunk Gragas firsthand. Yeah. How, how rough jungling without Smite can be. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit, a little bit. So. <laughs> Hopefully he changes that. I don't think he will. You're going on 13 seconds. I don't want to remake this. I think it might have to be. Someone tell him. I, he still has the ignite. Oh my fucking god. Oh, okay. Oh, there it is. Uh, hey. We were trolled. We, we got trolled. Oh. All right. Oh god. Okay. So in any case. So... Uh, we were talking about team fights and everything. Uh, both teams have the appropriate engage. You have, from the side of CBK, you have the Zack and you have the Rumble that can Thresh. just do some absolute mayhem in a team fight. Especially because Rumble can just drop. If Rum if the Rumble, if Jingle 1996 is proficient enough on the Rumble and drop the Equalizer to split the front line and the back line, that would be the best situation, especially like in a lane. Um, and I think that is where they would have a lot of their strengths, you know, because if you can split off the back line from engaging into the fight and just let their tanks die, well, you know, tanks, the tanks such as uh, Sejuani and uh, Aurelia can't exactly, you know, do a lot of damage. Aurelia can, but not in a 1v4 setting. So if they can, if they really just orient in a team fight, I think they'll be okay. But on the side of Team Vi, at the same time, Sejuani is going to be a big, big, um, negotiator in those trades because they're always going to be afraid of the Sejuani engage. They can't group up. They can't, uh, you know, especially if it gets, if, uh, if Aurelia and Jace get ahead early, they're really not going to want the, t the 5v5 team fights, especially because of the Sejuani there. So it just really depends on how they play the early to mid game. Um, if they fall behind, it's going to be harder and harder and harder because in all honesty, Sejuani has the better engage. Um, but if they can find a couple picks, if they become more pick oriented and try to, you know, get as many fights um, in their favor, like you know, when it comes to bodies, if Zach can position himself to where you know he gets a two v one and uh, get some picks here and there, then it'd be great, especially with the Malzahar as well. So it just really depends on how they want to orient their team fight. Uh, but yeah, I mean, who do you got for this one? Um, I'm gonna have to go for. Um What's what's Dylan's team name? Sorry. 
I should uh, write this down. Team Vi. Team Vi, only because I'm, I'm looking at their team comps right now, and I just don't see the late game scaling from uh, CBK. Um, the Malzahar is going to have to get ahead real early. The Rumble's going to have to get ahead early. If, 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 CBK, if CBK can... Uh, but, but if it goes past 30 minutes, it's got to go to, to Team Vi, because... Uh, well, with the Jin, for example, like one of the biggest things the Death Touch, the Deathfire Touch nerf did to him was 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 kill his late game damage and his early game poke. So, yeah, his mid game is just as strong, and he'll always be able to CC you. But what are you gonna do when your Twitch is melting through your entire team late game? Or uh, Jace is you know shock waving you to oblivion, or Aurelia is just on your butt, you know? Yeah. I just really don't see them winning the late game if they can get a lot of early game action going. Then they could obviously pull it ahead with a lead, but uh, you, how do how do we know how teams handle leads in this <laughs> this um, league? You know. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, but at the same time, if uh, if Vi is such a cat and Zorak, because Vi is a cat is no slouch when it comes to support. If right. she can if she can uh, stall Sadistic's Twitch as long as possible, then you know. Maybe they have a chance. It depends on how on how hard they actually uh, kill sadistic on this twitch. Um, that could help them out in in that little in that little setting to of post thirty minutes. But man, there's just you're absolutely right. There's just a lot of damage coming out of the side of Team Five. And you got the Aurelia, who is no slouch in late game damage. Jace, I mean, everybody knows what Jace can do. And then you know the twitch will scale automatically. So. Yeah, it's hard because, like, I mean, General Dill is going to do what he does on Jace, and Frontlash is going to do what he does on Aurelia, and this whole time, Twitch is going to be saving up for, you know, Bork, Runons, and Infinity Edge. Eventually, he's going to get it, and then it's game over, you know? Mm -hmm. Unless, you know, they get a pick on him, and they, they keep doing that all game, and if, if uh, Violet Sociocat can hook in the Jace or the Twitch late game, then that, that could be it for them. Who knows? Yeah. And what a lot of people don't know is that Jace actually doesn't have a lot of late game damage. Uh, something that Riot's uh, been <laughs> been killing about him, uh, uh, an aspect that they've been killing about Jace uh, for quite a while now, uh, running on three patches, uh, is that he doesn't have a lot of late game damage. A lot of his, uh, a lot of where he shines is from the mid to mid to the early mid to to mid game is where he hits his huge power spikes because everyone's trying to get their damage items no one's really focusing on tank at the moment so you know that's where a lot of the a lot of his kit shines through uh but late game he doesn't exactly do that much you know he has some good poke especially if he goes black lever but i don't really see dill going black lever first he's probably gonna go vanilla jace which is gonna Compose of the Yomus, the uh, the Rush Yomus into the Black Cleaver, maybe. Uh, so it just just really depends, uh, and then it'll be on Sadistic at that point to to output the damage. And it's the same thing with Aurelia. Aurelia doesn't have a lot of late game damage as well. She has true damage, which is great, but I mean, Silent Taco is going to be building a lot of health. Jingle is going to try to All get right, as tanky as possible as well. Quick question: How do I bring up items and stuff? Uh oh, press O. Oh, got it. Okay. All right. So we got a ping going to the river already. We're probably going to be looking at well, maybe not an early invade, but some scouting potential here. Looks like both teams are on the opposite sides of the map. Yeah, and also Violet Sister Cat actually took Death Sentence first, so they're definitely going to try oh, and really? look around for. Yeah, she took okay. Death Sentence first, so he's definitely. They're looking for a pick. Looks like uh, if they can get vision on him, they might just trade blue buffs here. But it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't look like they do get a get vision on him. Frontlash is going to be in some trouble here Ooh, if he walks up Frontlash to that bush. Is coming up. They oh, do they have it warded. They have it war No, they have it warded. They can actually oh, they come do. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Let's see. No, they, I, I don't think so. I think they're, they're looking for it. it. I think they're wary of it. I think he's in max hook range at the moment. We'll see. Um, oh, it is. And a great hook on front line. Great hook, and, and that's first blood. Going over the Malzahar, that's huge. Oh, man. Yep. What a play from Violet Sociocat and the CBK. Uh, it looks like there is going to be a blue buff trade here now. Sir Abbott's smart enough to realize that um, he's probably not going to stick around. Well, actually, uh, this isn't good for... Oh, it's not even a trade. No, yeah, this isn't good for... Uh, for uh, I'm sorry, for Team Vi here. Because they could get Silent collapsed Taco's on. coming down. They could get collapsed on here. Oh, he jumps no, in? No, he jumps in, yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, well, they're still fighting over the blue buff here. Death sentence. Hits the smite. Oh, Silent Taco got the smite from Sir Everett's. Uh, if, uh, the hook was already used. It's about a 15 second cooldown coming out of Thresh there, so they're not going to get anything else out of this. Actually ended up going in favor of CBK again. Yeah, some really, really early uh, early advantages coming on the side of CBK. And now Sir Everett's is going to be really, really behind because he's now he's just now starting his red buff. With no leash, I don't think he's going to be able to do enough camps to get the blue buff on the same clear. So he's no going to be really, really behind. He can't even finish off the red buff. Can he not? Uh, uh, it, does, it does look like he's... Oh, gonna it's going to be close. Be close. 200 damage. No, oh, he's not. not. No. Oh, no. That's very, very unfortunate. He doesn't have it. Oh, early trades coming up in the top lane from the Aurelia. Yeah. Actually taking it to the rumble a little bit. Uh, trades back a little bit of damage with the flame spitter. <clears throat> Good early ward for Jingle, something that uh, all top laners should do. As you know. No. <laughs> Man, you're like, who needs wards? Wards are just spoilers. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Man, Fromus is switch? really wanting to fight this top lane. Look at that, he's actually oh, yeah, doing he's the damage. Back damage. Yeah. Man, that hit ten style. I, I'm telling you, whenever I started playing Aurelia, that hit ten style gets absolutely busted. Once you yeah, get a especially couple of with corrupting in there. potion. Like with, the, like you say, with a couple of points in there, you don't really get punished for picking corrupting potion first. Nope. Look at that. He's already damage. Damage. That's true damage. You oh, Silent Taco's already, already in the back. Oh, the flash out for front lash. Oh, he takes out the rumble. Silent Taco's going in on him. They turn around there in the minions, but it doesn't matter. Silent Taco's damage is going to be enough there. But that that kill on the Aurelia with the with the CS advantage already is going to be pretty huge. Yeah, and the thing is, is that Rumble actually has a TP, and if he's smart, yeah, he's going to automatically TP to the min uh, to the minion wave. Meanwhile, because front lash opted to take in the uh, the ignite. Not going to be able to get, uh, well, it, it looks like Jingle's going to be able to catch up and farm here with his next couple of waves. Yeah, definitely. I now uh, have Fire Ward turned oh, off, so it'll be... Oh no, so Will Brooks is actually getting caught out by the Valiant Associate Cat. Ooh. Damage coming back from the uh, fourth hit there, but, uh, let me see, is Twitch running, Lifesteal? Yeah, he's going to heal back up after a little while. Good hook. It's going to be on Will Brooks to uh, predict those hooks and spell shield the right target. Um, oh, no. They're getting hooked again without the spell shield. With the spell shield up, yeah, it's not something you want to be caught doing. That damage coming back. I was wondering when uh, the Jin Thresh lane was going to start trading some damage back because early on they were pushing up to their tower, which I guess the Jin you don't really doesn't really happen too often. Yeah, definitely. Looks like some more fights going on in the top lane too. Frontlash getting poked out a decent amount by this jingle uh, rumble here. Yeah, the amplifying tome already coming into place here. Meanwhile, uh, Frontlash was only able to pick up a blue crystal in exchange. Uh, trying to get that sheen rough. first. Yeah, he's trying to get that sheen first. We got a gank coming up, possibility, but it's spotted out by the ward. Good wording, but in the top lane. So Everett's just gonna have to walk away. Still pretty far behind. Uh. Silent yeah, only players. 6 CS to uh, Silent Taco's 22 minions. Yeah. Or camps he's got going on there. So it looks like he's, he clears the ward out there. Um, still hanging around. He really needs to just start to farm to get to 6 because he's already so far behind. Yeah, but the thing is... And, and I absolutely agree with you, and I and I really don't understand why he's not just farming because he wasn't able to get that you know optimal level one clear. His red buff is still up. Oh my gosh! His red buff is still up. He has only had Dude, one buff in six now. in six minutes. Yeah, exactly. So I he, it looks like he's way, he's way more interested in uh, uh, in the gank potential and getting his lanes ahead. But in reality, like. You're you're Sejuani. You're so good, level six. Like you're you're one of the biggest uh, threats on the team post level six, and you're delaying that for so long. It's, it's I'm just talking not harding the blue buff. Yeah, it's hard because, I mean, what are you gonna do if you're not level six? What are you gonna do against Rumble? Rumble's just gonna double kill you guys under turret or whatever he wants to do. So top lane's not really gankable, I don't think. 
Zerok is just putting in the damage on Sadistic oh. right now as well. He only yeah. has binding, but on the Thresh, there's you know, Sadistic is way too way too low health. To Flash hook from a lot of Sociac splits the uprights. Really good dodge there by Sadistic, you know, opting to, to go in top. That's gonna be in Vile Associate Cat's memory banks now. You know, he's gonna yeah. she's gonna realize that he goes up whenever he tries to dodge the hook, so he'll probably start swinging a little wide up, so Fun fact, up is the best place to go against a thresh hook. Is it really? Yeah, because it uh, actually has a wider angle on the kinda like the downside the way you can uh, throw it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So kind of it's not very much of a difference, but, Ooh, but oh, we got the flash on coming going. out. This he gets out with his the exhaust coming out of Will Brooks onto the gin, and the stealth gets a sadistic out of there. Oh, we got a fight going on in the top lane. Jingle taking some damage from front lash now that he's got his sheen. That's going to deal some more damage there with the empowered autos. I'm actually surprised Jingle didn't try and go for the engage there because Frontlash actually does not have his ultimate. He used it in, I believe, uh, a trade or trying to clear out the minion waves. So he does have the information that he doesn't have it, but Frontlash already does have his Ignite up. So we'll have to see Sadistic in a really dodge. awkward situation right here. Sir, Sir Everett is here, but. Ganking on these. Well, binding miss from Will Brooks. Looks like the gank on to uh, buy that Sociopath Cat's going to work out. Flash from Sadistic to get that poison on. Let's see if his expunge can take him out. He heals for the extra auto. Oh, but uh, Sir Abbott still takes the kill. Um, probably needed that kill. Yeah. Catch up a little bit, but a lot burned for that uh, for that kill on the support there. Flash and heal from Sadistic. Yeah, uh, and, and all the meanwhile, Frontlash actually going down in the top lane to a silent taco gank as well. Uh, not in the best spot right now uh, is Frontlash, and he's not even going to be able to TP back into the lane, so really good on Silent Taco to, to uh, recognize that little discrepancy in the uh, in the summoner spells there, but it looks like... Uh, yeah, he trade the top gank for the... He, he gets the gank on top to trade the bot, but the thing about bot lane ganks, dragon pressure now. Bukake Poro coming in though to deal some damage to see if he could do anything here. The smite is up for Sir Everett, taking a ton of damage. Xerox in there now too, ult from Bukake Poro. Oh, Shockwave coming out from General Dill, but the kill's going all right on over to that Jin. They get the dragon, they get a couple of kills. General Dill flashes in to go for the hammer time. Does not get anything out of that. Uh, Ali's not going to let him get out alive. Couple of kills here, and he goes down. Really, really big swing over to uh, CBK on that trade there. Not only getting the gank top, but getting the dragon. Two, three more kills. Two more kills, excuse me. And uh, damage on the spot turret. Uh, again, another misplay by Sir Everett. That entire time he was he was waiting for Sadistic and Will to do all the damage onto the dragon. He wasn't even hitting the dragon, and it was like around 600 HP. If he had gotten maybe two auto attacks in, he would have had the smite to be able to to finish it off. But I don't understand why they opted to not do that. Meanwhile, bring down that turret. But first turret gold actually already went over to CBK. That's two turrets down, one top and one bot now. Huge gold swing over to CBK there. Look at that gold lead now, it's 4,000. Yeah, we were talking about this before. CBK just looks a little bit more organized in their team in their team play. Meanwhile, on the side of Team Vi, you have Frontlash on Aurelia, who is just comfortable on Aurelia, and then General Dill is just comfortable on, on Jace. There's not really a lot of synergy going on there. Uh, and CBK just really, really putting it on them and punishing them for that sort of, you know, uh, lack of synergy there. I mean, this is exactly what CBK needed. Like, we, like I was talking about, if they can get this huge gold lead early, then they can they can pull it out. And it looks like that's what they're trying to do here. Ooh, jingle oh, we get a fight going on. Late. Sir Everett's fighting in his own jungle against Jingle here, getting some damage on. Aurelia's running, but uh, oh, the alt coming out of Sir Everett's. And General Dill's killer now to deal some damage back. Oh, and he gets the kill, but Bukake Poro ults General Dill. Are the minions going to be enough to kill him? They take him out. Can Bukake Poro trade back some more? He's dealing so much damage with his minions. Not going to get out. Not going to get out another kill on that one. But, uh, you know, tr a good trade. One for one. One for but one. But the kill going on to the mid lane is pretty big. Yeah, one for uh, one for one. But Jingle was caught out. By all means, he should have been. He should have just been dead at that point. But. And again, Sir Everett's just using to uh, the ultimate just to to get there, and just not a lot of not a lot's going right right now for Team Vi. You know, uh, 
a catch out in their jungle should by all means mean a kill and then that's it but you know cbk is still getting one for ones here and there and that's going to start adding up rotating mid now they're going to get that last uh, tier one turret down uh, shock fast coming out shockwave coming out from general dill dealing some decent damage to zarok and it looks like they wave cleared out be interesting to see what their next move is here. They keep sieging mid. Um, looks like Jingle's pushing that top lane in pretty hard. What do you think? What do you think is their next move should be with this huge gold? Man, uh, when is Dragon up? Dragon's not going to be up for... Uh, it's not going to be up for a while, but... Um, I mean, honestly speaking, I think they just need to leave it on. Macro play-wise, uh, they actually kind of outpace themselves because they don't exactly have the damage to be able to keep sieging down towers, uh, especially now because we're in the mid-game now. You know, it's 12 minutes and we're already heavily established into the mid-game. Uh, so waiting for is over for sure. Yeah, exactly. So I don't really know where uh, CBK can get a lot more of these advantages. They already have the two side wave uh, first tiers. So now they're really going to be looking towards pick and then fighting around uh, jungle objectives. Uh, they could opt to try and go for the uh, for the Rift Herald if they really wanted to, but there's no one on their team that really utilizes that. I mean, Zach can't really utilize that to the greatest extent. Rumble isn't exactly an auto attacker, so... Looks like they are trying to siege this down. See, this is the... Uh, something that's not talked about as is, yet is, is, is prioritizing maybe that mid turret early would, would prevent a lot... Or, so the sa what I'm trying to say is um, Team Vi saving this mid turret really allows them to slow the game down and really stall out to try and catch up. Mm -hmm. um, but it actually looks like it's going to go down here. Vi uh, like coming in with game. the gank. Mm -hmm. Sir Everett's getting hit by it, but they get that turret down. Oh, oh the hook! The hook on Sadistic is going to take him down. The ult from Rumble killing him as he tries to run away. Looks like Sir Everett's has gotten a rock and a hard place yes. here, but he ults to try and get out. Uh, I don't think he'll be TP able to come and get talk out. to save that top turret, but uh, yeah, it looks like they get a kill and a turret. Well organized by CBK there. Man, I, via Sosokat, man, time Coming and time again. That flash hook. Time and time again, hooking the targets that he needs, that she needs to Looks hook. Like Side Taco jumping in again to create some pressure on that turret. Nope, just fake. You know, pump fake. Oh my god! Another hook coming in on Sir Everett's missed play. That's okay. Uh, Sunlash coming in solo, killing the uh, Rumble top. Oh, oh is it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, there. Yeah, hits and saw. <laughs> hits and saw still broken. <laughs> And that's going to be a free drag coming over for the side of CDK as well. Some more pressure. 4k gold lead, 14 minutes into the game. Oh, Sadistic getting caught out of... Uh, who's, caught, who's caught who here? I can't even tell anyone. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately no one was around uh, by the sociocat to be able to capitalize on that. But by all means, I mean, I mean, you saw Sadistic there just backing straight off of Ayo sociocat. Doesn't want anything to do with her at this point. Even though he probably yeah. could have solo killed, but... Just, you know, that, that pressure in the early game, just he afraid. He doesn't have his Blade of the Ruin King yet. He's only got 78 CS 15 minutes in. I, he, yeah, I don't even think he could kill her. Let's see. Front Lash making it work. Uh, top lane. getting Gonna get this first tier tower. Uh, some much needed gold on the side of Team Vi uh, for that. This uh, front lash is starting to, to bury this this rumble and CS here. Three oh. and three against the one and four. Oh, we're getting a gank going on, sir. Everett's uh, get caught out by the pink court. Definitely decides to go in because the chilling smite walks away. Probably smart. Oh, we get three coming up here. Dylan coming in with the shockwave, but an early Zonia's rush for the rumble does not save him. Still, a Zonia's rush. So why would you rush a Zonia's? You are ahead! Why don't you do the Andrews? Oh, okay. I mean, I... I don't get it. I don't play Rumble, I guess, but I would all... I was always yeah, under Lee the impression Andrews, that... Yeah, the go. Yeah, I, I was always under the impression that Leandries, if you're ahead, is the best item because, you know, it just solidifies your damage, gives you a little bit of tank in the meanwhile as well. But, eh, I guess what do I know at that point? Yeah, looks like they're gonna get the Rift Herald, too. That's gonna be pretty big for the... Or, who are they gonna give it to? The Sir Everett's? Maybe Dylan? Uh, I, I would think Dylan. I think they'd go to Dylan. No, they're good. Yeah, they're good. On it. Oh, but it's oh, not going to be for Another free. Another coming out from Violet Sociocat. Ult coming out from Jin. Sir Evans looks like he's going to go down. Make him pay a little bit for what they got off of that.
but not too much, you know. Just a just a highway toll. Oh, General De Violet Sociocat overstepping your bounce here. Oh, coming out from Violet Taco. Yeah, uh, it's going to be the damage coming back out from that. Uh, binding coming onto Zorak oh, there is going to stop him Zorak out. Zorak is the pretty, damage as well. pretty stacked. Has to heal to get out. General Dylan so low. The flash coming out from Althahar getting him out. Another hook coming onto Will Brooks. A couple of big picks coming out in this jungle. Bukake Poro still on the chase from that. Oh, the ult still up. Getting front lash. Silent Taco is going to be able to get in there and try and see. Uh, let's see if we can get the, oh, yep, the CC coming out from Zorak, and he gets another pick. Three picks in that topside jungle. All five still alive. Get some push on this mid, maybe a little bit. Uh, death timers are pretty short, so they're not going to get a whole lot, but some really great picks to keep the gold lead ahead. We're gonna go ahead and yeah, actually get the siege on this turret. Pretty, pretty big for them. Man, they just keep the. You gotta keep the pedal on. You gotta keep your foot on the gas with this team comp to stay ahead, like we were saying. And they're doing a really good job of keeping that, making the other team know that they have a gold lead. Oh, and Sir Evans is just getting caught for free. Yep. Oh. Walking into his, his jungle is not a safe place without any turrets up or any vision really whatsoever. Yeah. Looking at the map. All the wards are in that topside jungle, and they still got caught and killed in the topside jungle. They have not stopped pushing. And another oh, flash hook. Bad. Flash okay. trying to hook again, but uh, it's all about sending a message at this point. You know, Silent Taco is going to rev up the slingshot, and the flash hook is just going to zone him off long enough to take it. 18 minutes, and they're already sieging down second tier, uh, second tier towers. Like, there is no tier 2 tower in the mid lane, and there is no tier 2 tower in the bot lane. It is 18 minutes into this game. And um, a 7k gold lead on the side of CBK, too. Yeah, CBK is just putting it on them constantly. Every single misstep that is, that's happening on the side of Team Vi is getting punished 100%. And it's getting punished to the fullest extent, where there's no trades, there's no misplays on the side of CBK right now. Their, their macro game is just immaculate right now. Yeah, and it's funny because I was commenting when they were taking that Riptail, you know, oh, they got one kill back, you know, a little toll, and they ended up making three more picks out of it. It's insane. Yeah. I mean, to play Devil's Advocate here on, on the side of Team on the side of Team Vi, you know, you could still try and stall out the game. Uh, Absolutely. That's, that's, still, that's still a very present matter right now. It doesn't matter what the gold lead is, uh, you know, come 30 to 40 minutes. You know, but they have to start playing that long game, and uh, we just saw Sir Everett's getting caught in his own jungle. That's not how you play the I'm long game. The top side river here. See if anything goes here. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing coming out. Yeah, Bio Tosin Cat a little far out. You have to start playing the long game. Like, you know, if I'm Sir Everett's right now, I can't be in my own jungle if, unless I'm hand-holding. Um, I'm just going to be in the lane and sharing XP and sharing gold and getting to that 30 to 40 minute mark uh, when... Uh, team CBK eventually starts scaling off. Look at that. Violet Sociocat just has no fear right now. Well, no. Brooks even caught out just a little bit, but nothing really much is going to come out. Sadistic is really, really far behind, only having the Blade of the Ruined King uh -huh. to Jin's Essence Reaver and Rapid Fire Cannon. And then another. Violet Sociocat on Sir Everett. Uh, ulting from the Jin on Sir Everett's not the best target, maybe. Oh, the Flash Dodge out of the Slingshot from Silent Taco. Pretty good to get out of it. Are they going to be able to keep you know, the miss from the Deadly Flourish is... Uh, oh! We get the ult coming out of the Rumble. Will Brooks going down. Flash from the Rumble as well. Another key pick. That's going to lead to a Baron. Tower goes down the bot lane, but I just don't think that really matters. That keep like They're just keeping the gas down, man. Full throttle from this team. Yeah, and here's and here's the problem as well. Dylan on the Jace uh, historically has been absolutely amazing on it, but now only 0 and 3, 21 minutes in, doesn't it, doesn't even have an item finish. He can't finish an item right now. He's too split. Sir, so ever oh, to oh, he smites too early, gets killed. Front lash just running around too. They're gonna both get taken out here, but the damage coming back on Bukake Port, decent amount. Uh, Silent Taco jumping in on the sadistic, but that play of the rune he's not just gonna be able to do anything. Uh, General Dill is gonna jump onto this this rumble. The Zonia's coming out clutch a little bit there, actually. He gives trade some damage down, gets the turret and the kill. He's dead. <laughs> I don't There's know why you want to step up to we were talking that. about, but uh, I don't know. It's just a little bit too too little too late, maybe. Yeah, just 
The Bound. minions pushing down the top side here. They're going to be able to see just pretty easily with uh, Thresh and Zack covering this uh, their carry there. Yeah, they just take it down. Just so much disruption on the side of CDK. Vile Sosa Cat with these with all of these death sentences. Silent Taco being able to come in on those death sentences as well. Bukake Poro in the back line with great positioning. And Zerak as well. Down too, down there. Yeah, and Zerak, so Zerak as well just playing out of his mind with his Jin as well. 4-0, really good positioning as well. Like, just... They're playing this team comp to its greatest ability right now. Bukake Poro really trying to kill this Dragon 1v1, but with no more of his little minions up, it's going to be a little challenging, but uh, Thresh is here to save the day. They got a pink war on it, they're, they're pretty safe. Something else that we haven't really seen is uh, is a diversity of dragons, but now here we have a wind drake, uh, an infernal drake, and a mountain drake. Yeah, it's, uh, they got they had a trifecta here going. Um, that mountain drake's really going to help them out um, Sieging down. to try and take down those turrets. Yeah, because they don't have the best siege. Frontlash actually... Pushing down that topside turret, uh, CDK is responding. Will Brooks knows it's here. Definitely gets the binding on the. Oh, the hook just misses max range. No fear. Santa Taco is still going in. Slingshot's almost there. The alt coming out of the gin here slows down the front lash. Santa Taco, another key binding on the thresh. Good job by Will Brooks there. But the damage coming out of the the curtain calls a significant amount on the front lash. Violet Sosier Cat coming in. Definitely doing the disruption. Jumps onto. Oh my gosh, that damage. But still, that last crit's going to take him down. Well, Brooks now is in trouble. The Santa Tacos get the slingshot. Doesn't have his spell shield up to prevent that knock, but I don't think he was going to get out anyway. Uh, he also binded the uh, the minion there from uh, Bukake Poro. Oh no. So pretty much sealing his fate there, missing that binding. Ping's going down to try and defend this top turret. I just don't think that they're going to be able to siege against this Baron minion in four of them. Yeah, just the Twitch there. The Twitch is so far behind. Sir Everett's coming in to try and defend it. To the spray and break coming out. No ult from Sir Everett yet. Is it down? Nope. Sadistic's just going to go down to no damage. And ult. Oh, it's just not enough. Meanwhile, Dylan just pushing that bot lane instead of helping out the top. I'm not sure if that was the right call there. Another key hook on the front lash from Violet Socio. Oh, and the Will Brooks going to go down as well. That might be game. Legendary coming out of the Zack here. 8 0 oh, and 9. 7 0 oh, and 7. 3 0 oh, and 13. Dylan's trying all he can to. Oh, and he's just going to go down to. No, he's not. Like wow. This. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, it's. He's it's strong. He's just not using his, his strength in the right places. Yeah, but unfortunately, this is going to be GG. I don't really think Sadistic in general Dill will be able to, to close this out. Another death sentence, because why not from Vaya Sosa? Gotta keep the, uh, Pushing uh, down on this yeah. And it's going to be GG on the Nexus. I wonder if that was a little bit of a tilt coming out from Dylan there, just only split pushing down and, and not help being with the team hardly. Um, it could be the fact. I think it could be the fact that he was, you know, he, uh, the rest of Team Vi was part of, was already like, okay, well, you know, let's let's go ahead, wrap this game up, let's chalk it up to a loss, and uh, we'll get him on game two and game three. Uh, so I think that's what it was, to be completely honest. Uh, but. I don't know. I guess I guess we'll have to see. They weren't. I mean, they were really far behind. Like we said, Sadistic was just in no position to be able to output the damage that uh, Team CDK were at the time. And Zurok on the Jin seven and zero. Silent Taco eight and zero. Not even dying on the Zack. I don't think his uh, his passive got popped once as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and just the story of the game was the death sentences from Violet Sociocat. I have to say. Yeah, those picks really helped that team comp come together. Um, I mean, they just they got ahead early, and they did not let off the gas. <laughs> you know, they just kept making plays and kept making plays. They, You know, Team Vi tried to stall it out, but CBK didn't want any of that. Just decided to make some more plays. Yeah. Well, all right, stream. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut it off real quick, but we'll be right back with uh, game two of these semifinals, and we'll try and see if Team Vi can go ahead and pick up the reverse 2-0 victory on CVK, but we'll be right back. I gotta pee.